All right, hello everyone. Eric Marks, FindingMiddleEarth.com, and today I'm here with another post-processing video. Uh, the last few videos I've done have been uh, post-processing videos. I've gotten a lot of really good feedback on it, so I'm going to keep doing them for a little while here. Um, real quick, if you guys hop over to my website and click the big subscribe button at the top, you'll get a free 45-minute video on uh, covering all my landscape photography gear. It goes through my camera bags and some accessories that I carry and all that good stuff. So if you uh, enter your email over there, you'll get that for free. Uh, let's go ahead and, and get into it today. So um, this is Pictorial 3. Okay, so I know... Um, a lot of people ranted and raved about this when it first came out. It was on a lot of blogs. It was on uh, tons of photography blogs. A lot of people were really loving it, and they've updated it pretty consistently uh, since the time from the release. I haven't had a chance to play around with it a lot because it wasn't working correctly with my iMac 5K graphics card. And so uh, one of the developers actually has been in touch with me about that, and they've like specifically been working on that issue for me. They fixed it, so I'm ready to, to show you guys a cool feature in this. Um, there's a lot of people that email me, of course, asking how I blend my photos and how I do um, my big digital blends when I take nine brackets or three brackets or whatever. And, you know, I, I do 99% of my stuff in Photoshop blending everything. Um, of course, I start inside of a raw processor. Lately, I've been really loving on one photo raw. Um, but Pictorial is one that's really good if, if you want um, a lot of capability inside of one software kind of like on one to where, to where you don't want to have to leave the software to go to Photoshop or bring in other sources. So if you're kind of a minimalist editor and you don't want to do, you know, Photoshop and then worry about, uh, you know, HDR blending softwares and, and panels like Raya Pro and do all these other things, this is kind of a, um, kind of an all-in-one, you know, inclusive software, uh, depending on, you know, your needs. So, this uh, software, the uh, Pictorial 3, has some cool features. I love the way it's set up. It's a very like pretty looking software. It's very intuitive, like the interface. Uh, and what we're going to touch on is Luminosity Mask. It has a very cool Luminosity Mask feature built in. Okay, so uh, this is the photo that's basically completed in here. Okay, it's good enough for me, I guess. Um, so we're going to go ahead and reset all the adjustments back to here. And I'm going to show you how I got there. So first thing you can see, this was... Um, just one exposure. Uh, this wasn't an overexposed or an underexposed. It was just the, the medium, you know, correct meter exposure that came out of the camera. And the, the sky is uh, a little overexposed, uh, which is fine because I know the Nikon D810 can handle that. The dynamic range is really good on that camera. But I'll show you a really good way to fix this. So you might, you know, most people, uh, if we go into the light panel here, this is where your normal exposure settings are. Most people would just say, hey, let's crank the highlights down crank the shadows up and we're good to go. Um, and I've, you know, I've made tons of videos on how I do my HDR stuff. Um, but the, the best process in pictorial would be, and then this is actually really nice, would be to go to skip all of the regular uh, exposure tools that we normally use at first and go right into the retouch panel. If you go here and you click tone, there's a nifty little feature at the bottom here called luminosity mask. And there's this little like scale uh, of luminosity mask and it shows you like a balanced light scale here from like, you know, really bright whites all the way to the darkest of darks. Um, Cause basically luminosity masks, masks are uh, gauged on white and black and anything that's white is selected. Anything that's black is not selected. Uh, so if you're trying, so for example, we're trying to hone in on just the, the bright sky right now. So I want the sky in my mask to be bright white and I want everything else to be very dark black or kind of a gray. Um, depending on what I want selected. So let's just go ahead and um, crank the exposure tool down here, like negative one stop. And let's just do some painting uh, over the sky. All right, let's just, let me see what my feathering is at 100%. And I'll take my flow up a little bit. Uh, we'll bring down the edge detection a bit. Okay, and we'll just start painting. Because this is what, uh, I, essentially this is what I want it to look like. I just want to bring down the exposure. Okay, I'll keep painting, and you can see the issue already. I'm lowering the exposure on the pier here. All the legs are going dark, and I'm basically painting half of the pier above me um, really dark, as well as the sky. So it's making it look really funky and fake, really weird looking. So I'm going to keep working on this. Okay, and I'm even affecting some of the water. So I've pretty much gotten the sky how I want it to look, okay, more or less. Let's turn the flow all the way up. I'm just scrub the rest of that in. I'm using my Wacom tablet, by the way, so I'm just 
using this like a paintbrush. Okay, so let's just do that. Okay, and say that that's how we want it. But obviously the sky looks much better now, but the pier and, and the horizon line are much darker. So what we can do, if you click O on your keyboard, it enters into this mask mode. And you can see everything that's white is selected. Everything that's black is not. So I, I've obviously selected uh, much more than I want to. I mainly just want to do the sky and leave the pier out of it. So if we start moving, you know, playing around with the luminosity mask, watch, watch what happens. We can start honing in on just the sky. We can bring this side in a little bit. And look at that. So as we're moving the scale, we're making the pier black, which is what we want. We want it deselected, and the sky is turning white, which is exactly what we want. And little bits of the water are turning white. That's fine because there are some hot spots in the water. And it's just all kind of a, a you know a, a balanced act here that we're just kind of playing until we get the right mixture of the mask. So that's a very, what I would call this is we're basically making a very restrictive luminosity mask. We're restricting the light to one area. Um, because we're, we're making it super, super uh, selective just to the sky here. So let's maybe add some, a little more to the sky. Okay, so that's good. So now most of the water is black and most of the pier is black, which means they're deselected. And then the sky is the main portion that we want to work on. So now let's hit O on the keyboard again. And let's uh, move the exposure tool and see what happens. So you can see as we go up and down. Oh, there we go. Sorry, my computer freaked out a bit. As we go up and down, we're just affecting the sky now. Okay, super cool. So now we're not really affecting the pier as much anymore. You can see, as I bring this down, the pier is staying the same. See, if I go all the way down, nothing's happening there. If I go up, same thing. So I'm just gonna bring this down a little bit because that's where we want it. Instead of doing the highlights, it's much better to, to lower the exposure instead of clamp the highlights all the way off. So I'm gonna lower the exposure. We're gonna add some contrast back in that sky. We're gonna add a little bit more warmth. And essentially what we just did, add some magentas, is we just selected the luminosity in the sky. And now we're balancing that exposure back in with the water here so that it's a more even exposure. And then once we have this balance, we'll go back into the actual processing, the regular exposure tools that we use. So let's hit O again, okay, and see if we missed any spots that are gray. So there's some gray over here in the corner. So what we can do is, uh, if we put edge detection on at 100%, um, and then, make the brush a little smaller here. We can just paint around the horizon line and the edge detect should do a pretty good job at just making these little gray spots that, that didn't get quite selected at 100%. We can just make them the rest of the way white, all right? Just some in this area over here. All right, and so right here at the horizon line is a little bit gray, so we'll make sure that's all white. And then we can of course hold the Alt Option key um, if you want to and paint out some of the water that we don't want uh, affected in the luminosity mask. So we can just kind of paint away bits of the water that we don't want. All right. Because you saw that I added some contrast and some white balance adjustments and maybe, you know, maybe we don't want that on the water as much. So we'll just inch that in closer to the horizon so that it doesn't affect too much of the water. And you can see it's that edge detection is doing a pretty good job hugging the horizon line there. I like that. So we will, we will, you know, you get the idea. We won't get too detailed into this. Okay, cool. So we'll hit O again. And now that is looking much better as far as a balanced exposure. So now let's close the retouch panel, go into the light panel, and we'll start doing some regular adjustments. So let's add a little bit of contrast. All right, let's lift the shadows a little bit. Not too much, just a little bit. Uh, let's maybe lower the exposure again overall, because I'm going to work i'm going to do some retouching on the pier and on uh the waves in a bit okay we'll lower it just there we go all right and then we'll add some warm tones again overall add a little some more magenta tones overall okay not too much I'm just doing this sparingly and keep in mind uh every single photographer uh you know has their own workflow i've mentioned that a million times in my videos every everybody does this differently um you know don't don't let this, uh, you know, get you into this slump thinking that, you know, whatever I'm showing you is the right way and your way is the wrong way. This is just, a, the whole post-processing thing is a very creative process. So it's all kind of up to the photographer, but it's great when, you know, you find out some new ways and cooler ways to do things. I'm gonna lower, I'm gonna bring the whites up a little bit. All right, so now I'm gonna close the light panel, go back into the retouch panel, go back into tone, 
uh, we'll add a new tone here and I'm gonna uh, leave the exposure at one uh, stop overexposed here and let's just paint in the some of the water because some of this foreground where the like the the waves kind of foam up the white foam I want that to stand out a little more I'm gonna bring down the edge detection uh, we'll bring down the flow and I'm just gonna start painting in some exposure on the initial foreground here where the waves are because I think it really needs those foamy bits and the waves really need the uh, some dominance there and because that's kind of the part that pulls my eye into the scene it's very it's a very nice set of leading lines there all right so you can see it's just adding the exposure very nice I'm going to um, go smaller with the brush here and I'm going to take away some of the exposure on this little bright this little hot spot right here that's getting hit by the last little bit of the sun there we go just to even it out a little bit I don't want to make that too much brighter okay and then I also want to to make these little uh, the little foamy bits that are making a line you know into the frame the little tendrils of water uh, I want to give those more texture and even more dominance so what I'm gonna do now is add another uh, tone readjustment or uh, I should say retouch local adjustment um, and we'll add another just a little bit of exposure and I want to uh, change it to clarity so let's uh, go add some clarity not too much just a little bit and that's just gonna bring out the texture in the waves okay so now let's make the brush much smaller okay let's go down here make the brush a little smaller and if we just kinda use this walk them to have like a paintbrush and just kind of streak do these big brush streaks or strokes with this uh, with the waves here you can see it's giving them more texture with the clarity and I want to brighten them even more Let me go up here add some more exposure uh, there we go so I want those bright white foamy things to just really really sing in this image okay I'll make it go over here I'm going to paint out some of it. I'm going to make my brush a little bigger. I'm going to paint out some of it that I did over here. I think it's a little too bright. So I want some of it to kind of fall off. I don't want every bit of the wave to be bright. You want you want your eye to have a clear direction of how it's going to enter the scene. And of course, this big wave right here, I definitely want to work on that the white foam on that wave because that's kind of a cool part of the image. So let's add some exposure and some texture into there. All right, we'll really work on that with the brush. That's good. We'll go back here to the kind of the, the far background, and add some exposure and texture into those waves. It just kind of separates uh, the tones. It, we're almost we're kind of somewhat dodging and burning with the exposure and the the clarity here. I'm just just scrubbing it over the white foamy bits of the waves, not the waves themselves, because I like the contrasty shadows under the waves, but I think the white foam uh, needs to be a little brighter. I like that. So we'll work on the foreground here a little more. You can see how it's really uh, bringing out the shapes, and I love that. It's really texturizing these, um, the foam and the waves here. Okay. I could spend hours doing this kind of stuff. I, I find this stuff so fun. That's why I'm making my big uh, landscape photography tutorial that I'm working on. I'm working so hard on that, by the way. I promise, promise it will be out soon. Um, and then pre-orders should start very very soon because I'm gonna do a pre-order um, that's gonna give you guys a, you know a nice uh, savings to my subscribers and my newsletter followers uh, and that'll show you everything that I do in Photoshop and all the different raw processors and how I dodge and burn and how I do selective color and all that all, I do tons of stuff and I, I find it very fun and it's very simple okay so we'll say that's cool just kind of texturizing the the white foam and the waves there uh, let's go into curves add some contrast into this all right that that was a little too much let's add some there we go let's see I'm trying to add more color by adding contrast uh, without actually having to crank the saturation up it's always better to make the color stand out by adding contrast or lowering the exposure versus just cranking the, the saturation tool up like a, to a crazy amount. All right, so something like that. Let's go back into the light panel. Uh, I might wanna add some more pinks overall. 
Okay, because I remember when I was there, it was very pink sunset. I'm going to actually uh, make the exposure a little brighter. And it is, it's blowing, it's not really blowing out, but it's making this this bit a little, you know, a, a little too um, bright. So I might bring the highlights down a little bit. And then we'll crank the shadows just a tad more to bring detail back under the pier. We'll add some overall contrast. And then I think I want to crop this uh, just a bit. So let's enter the crop tool. And I think I want to bring the left side in a little bit and maybe bring this up to where it starts on some of the cooler waves here. And maybe we'll bring this in just a little bit, not too much. Okay. And I'll just hit enter, let that lock in. Give my Mac rainbow ball a minute to catch up with this. Okay, so uh, that cropped it. I'm, I'm just examining it, make sure I like it. I think I like it. That's good. Now we have the, the brightest part of the waves here kind of directly in the foreground leading you in. Um, and of course, you know, I, I would go into Photoshop and do uh, a lot more to this and, and make it more subtle instead of this this punchy. Because I think, I think it's, you know, at the end here, I think I, it's kind of on the verge of being a little oversaturated in the sky. So, I, you know, I would make some fine tuning adjustments, but I just want to show you, uh, I get a lot of emails asking, asking, you know, people saying that, hey, I don't like using Photoshop and all these other things. Eric, you know, what would you recommend as a raw processor that's kind of an all in one thing? So Pictorial 3 and On One Photo Raw are both fantastic for like your all in one, you know, that have just more advanced options uh, inside of one software if you don't want to go into Photoshop and a lot of other plugins and stuff. So, uh, you know, this doesn't look bad by any means. I think it's it, the luminosity mask feature is just a cool feature. So we can do a little before and after. So there's before, after, before, after, before, after. I think I added too much pinks. Uh, it's, it's always good, by the way, at the very end of, of a picture, I always look at a before and after so I can make sure I didn't go overboard. So I'm actually going to go into the color and uh, pull the saturation down a little bit, like maybe 4%, and add some vibrance. And then take away some of the contrast to, to make the sky a little less, just a little more subtle, not quite as punchy in those oranges. And then I'll just add some warmth instead of cranking the saturation. Maybe even a little more magenta. Yeah, so I think that already looks much more natural. Something like that, okay. So let's do a quick before and after again. Before, after, before, after. Cool, all right, so I hope that helped you guys, all of you guys that wanna do uh, kind of an all-in-one software editing. Of course, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments. As always, thank you guys so much for watching my videos, and I'll see you in the next one. If you would like to stay up to date on all of my photography videos and free tutorials, please consider subscribing by clicking on my face. And if you would like to find out more about me and how to improve your photography, visit my website at findingmiddleearth.com.